who is also doubling tonight because he's also vice president of the Boston Historical Museum Association. <coughs> Mrs. Woodhouse has offered her regrets. She has undertaken to go down to the museum because we're running a bit behind time and there are two or three people down there who are going to be at the museum who couldn't come to the dinner. And on my right, Mrs. Helen Green, the mother of Nancy, and Bob Green, the father of Nancy. Uh, their donation to this cause, of course, is a champion. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll pass up the lady on my right for the moment, but we're certainly going to get back to her in a short while. Now I'll call on Alderman. <laughs> I'd like to call on Alderman House to say a word on behalf of the City of Rossman. Thank you, Mr. President, our guests, mm. friends and supporters of the Rossman Historical Museum Association, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of His Worship Harold Elms and the, the members of the City Council, it's my great pleasure to welcome Nancy home again for a little short visit, but for a very important occasion to the museum people. Uh, to our honored guests and friends who have supported the museum and uh, helping with the project that we're about to inaugurate tonight, the city says thank you very much. And to my dear friends and workers from the Museum Association, the city said carry on the good work. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here, and we sincerely hope that you enjoy the evening's festivities. Thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Woodhouse. <coughs> now, <coughs> I have one or two messages that I would like to read. And uh, I have a telegram here. This just arrived today. <coughs> and I will read it. It says to J.D. MacDonald, Rossman, B.C. Just returned from Eastern Canada and read your invitation to attend dinner and official opening of the Nancy Green Wing of the Rossman Museum this evening. Stop. Deeply regret that I am unable to attend on this important occasion which marks the significant process, progress, in the development of our splendid Rossman Museum. Stop. Best regards to Nancy and to all who have played a part in the project. Phyllis Gregory Ross. Here. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the Rossman Museum, Mrs. Ross, of course, was the honorary chairman of the Rossman uh, Centennial Committee and uh, she actually presided at the opening of the museum building itself in 1967. <clears throat> and I might add, as far as the Nancy Green Wing is concerned, uh, when we first started to talk about it, Mrs. Ross was the first to send in her donation. She's one of our most ardent supporters, and she's one of Nancy's most ardent supporters. I have another letter here. Uh, actually, we, uh, of course, you know that we are in receipt of a, a grant from the provincial government for this project and the provincial government was to have been represented tonight by the Honorable Donald Brothers. <coughs> but unfortunately, Mr. Brothers is out of the country, and he has sent this letter to us. Thank you for your letter of April 17th, inviting me to attend a dinner and the official opening of the Nancy Green Wing at the Rossman Museum on May 13th at 6.30 p.m. Nothing would have given me more pleasure than to be with you on this memorable occasion, but regretfully I must decline your kind invitation as I shall be representing the provincial government at Expo 70 in Osaka, Japan, during that period of time. Needless to say, the opening ceremony of the wing will be an overwhelming success with our Nancy Green Reign officiating. However, I would like to add my personal best wishes to its success. Yours sincerely, D.L. Brothers. And now, <clears throat> this gathering here, basically, uh, the members of the our directors of the Rossman Museum, and the remaining people have either contributed through one way or another, or they are representing organizations and firms who have contributed to the Nancy Green Wing on the Rossman Museum. In other words, without the people who are gathered here tonight, or the firms that they represent, there would have been no Nancy Green Wing. And uh, <coughs> I would just like to introduce the visitors those who are representing firms and so forth outside our area. I would like to go around the table and introduce them to our own people so we'll know who they are. And as I call out their name, I wonder if they would just stand and be recognized. We have with us tonight representing the village of Warfield, Alderman Curly Wheatley and Mrs. Wheatley. 
And we have representing Lingo, Mr. Rex McMeekin, who is administrative assistant, and Mrs. McMeekin. Representing the Red Mountain Ski Club, we have Mr. Derek Williams. And Mrs. Williams harbors her regret she had to leave early. Representing the Canadian Amateur Ski Association, we have Mr. David Jones and Mrs. Jones. Representing the Imperial Tobacco Company, which of course is De Maurier, Mr. Mike James. And of course, representing BC Telephone, we have Mr. Don Knight, Mrs. Knight, Mr. Barry Chapman, and Mr. Graham Stewart. They are presently escorting Nancy throughout the province, where she's speaking to the schools in the various towns. <coughs> Representing the interior breweries, we have Mr. Terry Hughes and Mrs. Hughes. And representing the Northern Electric Company, we have Mr. Al Evoy and Mrs. Evoy from Penticton. We also would have had a representative from the Square D Company, which is an, another electrical supply company, but Mr. Tom Kenyon sent his regrets that he was unable to attend. We would have had a representative from the Electrovert Company, which again is another electrical supply company, and Mr. V. Sporer sent his regrets. He was not able to attend. And I'd also like Dave Dalboy to stand up, because Dave has done something a little bit special that I'd like to tell you about. Dave, you better take the ball. <laughs> Thank you. Dave Dalgoy has presented to the Nancy Greenwing a set of Olympic first day cover envelopes. And he has done this for the series of Olympics that Nancy was representing us in. And he's done it up in a very nice way. He has combined the history of the Winter Olympics with a history of Nancy's career in the Olympic Games. And Dave, as I told you, we have this we have the frame made for this, but the special photographic glass has not appeared yet. So what we have done, we have set it up in one of the spare cabinets, and it will be there on display tonight for everyone to see. And I would also like to acknowledge the presence of the press, the radio, and the television. We're very pleased to have you with us here tonight. Now, when I brought this thing in, Nancy says, oh, that's your speech, eh? I won't read it. But Actually, I, I had no intention of making a speech, and this is to be a strictly informal gathering, and I, I only want to take a minute or two because we do want to hear a bit from Nancy, and uh, I would just like to tell you briefly how the Nancy Green Wing actually came into being. <coughs> I think actually Nancy probably started back in the studio in CJT one day in 1968. We were making a tape for Dave Glover. And uh, after we were finished, we sat back and we were relaxing. And I said, you know, Nancy, we should have a sweater or something that we could put in the museum as a token of Nancy Green. So she looked at me and she said, well, maybe we could do something with it. And uh, <clears throat> as we left the studio, she must have been thinking, because by the time we got to the car, she had added a few more items. So then we didn't see Nancy for two or three months after that. But one day in the press, we noticed a headline that said, uh, Nancy Green is going to give her equipment to Rossum that's not going to any museum in the East. So we thought, that's our Nancy, she's working with us. <coughs> and I guess it was a month or so later when Nancy came back to town, and we got together again. And she said, now just what do you want? So naturally, uh, the sky is the limit as far as the Rossum Museum is concerned. And uh, we talked about this and that and the other thing, and I left Nancy's house that night after discussing it with a fairly long list of items that we might get. So I returned a day or two later, and uh, Nancy was there to greet me with her arms loaded with equipment, and I thought, oh boy, we're, we're really doing well. And I thought, well, this is it, now I'll go. And she said, wait a minute. And back in the house she went, she just thought of something else. Well, this went on, I practically needed to uh, help her. And as a result of this, we were able to put in a full-size display in the Rossman Museum that summer, which, uh, well, if you could have seen the kids when they came in and just looked, you know, you could just see their eyes glowing. This, this was Nancy Green's stuff. Can I touch it? And this sort of thing. 
And uh, as a result of this, we thought, well, now, why shouldn't we do something? Nancy has been honored throughout the country. Uh, Rosslyn, the name of Rosslyn, has been carried around the world. Nobody knows where Rosslyn is, but they know that Nancy Green comes from Rosslyn. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we thought, well, we should do something about this. And so we spoke to Nancy again at the next opportunity, and we said, look, if you will donate this stuff to the museum, we'll do our best to see if we can't provide a wing for it. So that it would be a permanent <coughs> display for Nancy Green in her hometown, which, of course, we all think, and all thought at that time, we should have. Well, that was in 1968, and uh, this now is 1917. We finally got it. We started out, we approached the provincial government, but of course, you never get anywhere in the first try. So we tried the Dominion government, and after a few months of letters going back and forth, we didn't get anywhere there. As a matter of fact, I was showing Bob Green the file yesterday in my office. The Nancy Green wing file is about an inch and a quarter thick with correspondence. But we didn't give up. So finally, we approached the provincial government once again. We said, look, we have this stuff here. If we don't do something with it, it's going back east. And we don't think this should happen. And uh, we gave them a pretty good story, if they thought we did. And uh, one night just before leaving work at the office, I got a phone call from Don Brothers' assistant. He said, I think we have some good news for you. He said, will you give me some background? He said, well, I want to write a story for Don to take into the legislature. And so we gave him all the information. And I think it was a day or two later in the budget speech, I hadn't heard it on the radio or anything, but Fred White phoned me. He said, have you seen the news? And of course, the news was that the provincial government had offered $7,500 for the establishment of a, a ski hall of fame at Rossland to be called the Nancy, Nancy Green Wing. And to claim this grant, we had to raise one dollar for every two that they put up, which is an exceptionally good deal. So naturally then, we weren't going to pass up the gift. So we redoubled our efforts. Now, we had a bit of a problem. We could not go to the public in Rossland and raise this money. Not that they wouldn't give it to us, but at that time, they were trying to raise money to recondition the swimming pool, which was in danger of being shut down because it was not up to modern standards. So we decided that we would not go to the Rossland public, that it wouldn't be fair. Instead, we tried to interest outside organizations and firms. And this we did. And as you can tell from the people who are gathered here tonight, you can see the interest that uh, we were able to get for the Nancy Green Wing. And there's a plaque in the Nancy Green Wing, and on that plaque is the name of each company and organization and person who donated to this wing. And uh, <coughs> that roughly is, well, not roughly, that essentially is how we got the wing that Nancy is going to open for us tonight. Now, I don't want to take any more time because I want to introduce Nancy. She doesn't need any introduction, but the program says I have to introduce her. But I just want to say one thing, that in being associated with this project, I think possibly it's because Nancy is the person that she is, that it made it easy, it made it interesting, and it made us want to do it. Nancy won a championship, as you know, that, that uh, brought her great fame. It, it thrust her right into a situation that normally could have turned the head of a lesser person. But Nancy wore her championship like a real champion, and we felt that, well, we want to do something for her. And uh, as I say, it has been a pleasure to work for her. And uh, just to give you an incident, uh, there were times, you know, when this thing, well, it got a little discouraging. People were starting to run when they saw you come a block away. That guy didn't ask me for money, or he wants me to go and work in the museum and this sort of thing. And just imagine you come home from work and you're tired and you think, gee whiz, I wonder if we'll ever make it. And then you start to think some more and say, well, gee, you know, Nancy has moved away from Montreal. She's married. She has two nice little bouncing children. And she's busy. We see her on the television. We read about her in the newspapers. And golly, I wonder if she's even got time to think about us, whether she even knows what we're doing here now. Should we go ahead with it? And then in the middle of all this, the phone rings. And you know you've got to get up and answer it. You know you've got to say, no, Susie isn't here. You've dialed the wrong McDonald's. This is the fifth time tonight this is happening. To see. And you pick up the receiver, but before you can say anything, out of the receiver comes, hi, it's Nancy. 
Well, right away, the whole thing uh, is good. You just realize that everything is all right after all, and that uh, you're sort of reinvigorated to go back and start all over again. And uh, this has been the, I'm sure this has been felt by all of us who have worked in this project. And uh, without any further ado, I think now that I'll ask Nancy to say one or two words for us. And after Nancy uh, talks to you, we will, of course, move on then down to the museum where Nancy will cut the ribbon and officially open the museum. So I give you Nancy Greenway. <laughs> I really don't know what to say. I feel that this is a tremendous honor for me to, to have the museum wing named after me and really for the, the interest and the, all the kind things that the people of Rossland have done for me. Really, if it wasn't for Rossland, I, I never would have, I, ne I couldn't have done anything because it was the mountain and the, the people and the whole atmosphere here that made me what I am. And I, I really, I'm almost overwhelmed at the, the tribute that people still pay towards me. Um, but this time I'd like to say that all, all my trophies and medals and everything eventually will be in the museum. Right now, most of them are still at home, and as soon as Mum gets tired of looking at them and dusting them, <laughs> I, I'd like to have them go to the museum. You know, it's, um, for me, the, well, the Canadian Hall of Fame, Sports Hall of Fame, and of course there's a ski museum in Ottawa now, and there's the BC Sports Hall of Fame and they all asked me for my medals and I'm, I'm really happy to say that they'll remain here in Rossland because this is, this is really where they belong. And as I travel around BC and around Canada, it, it makes me feel good to be able to say to people to go to Rossland and if you want to see my medals and trophies and things, that that's where they are because uh, I don't think, well, this will always really remain my home. It's, it's where I grew up and a place that, that I'll always call home. So it's, it's naturally the place where I, I want all these things to belong. Sometimes I still can't believe that it's all really happened and, but, you know, that people, you know, that it's important to them that they have a sweater or some skis and things like this because it still, it, it doesn't really seem real when I think of it that way. But uh, anything you want, you can have. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Those are very kind words. <laughs> uh, before we move out to the museum, there's just one or two things I would like to say. And one of them is that this museum, the Nancy Green Wing is not even open yet, but I think it's already, it's pain is spread across Canada because a week ago we got a letter addressed to the Nancy Green Ski Museum, Rossman, B.C. <laughs> Attention, managing director. No. <laughs> and I had a great <laughs> argument as to who should open this. <laughs> we finally both took hold of it and I see it. But this came from New Brunswick, the University of New Brunswick, and they are interested in starting a museum, a, a sports hall of fame, and they have written us to ask us how we should go about it. Now, we'll just have to tell them that we had a champion to start out with. <laughs> that's about all we can tell them. Now, another thing uh, that I would like to mention, in the main museum, there are one or two displays not ready yet because we just haven't had time, so uh, they will be ready before the public opening, we, we hope, and we hope that you'll forgive us for, for that part. But in the Nancy Green Wing, we have the gentleness display as well as Nancy's uh, equipment. Now, for those who don't know, Olaf Jelness introduced skiing to Nancy's Red Mountain in 1896. And in 1900, he won the Canadian Championship here in Rossman at the Winter Carnival in Rossman that year. And uh, it was Olaf Jelness who started the whole train of events that has led up to Nancy Green three quarters of a century later. And we are very lucky that we have the equipment of these two great champions who stand across, face each other practically across the century. Now, there's one other thing. We have one case there that still has nothing in it. Well, we're using it for Dave's display tonight. But it is waiting for another champion. And uh, I would hope that the future directors of the Rossman Museum someday will put a great big shiny cup in there with a card on it that says, World Champion, and won jointly by Willie and Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think this is about all that we have to say here. 
And uh, we'll just move off then, uh, at your leisure, to the museum where we will go in and Nancy will officially open the window.